I'll zoom chat box, please. All right. So we're kind of digging around the foundation to put in a, in a foundation detail. You see the what's called the fiber board, the cement board that goes around the base of the foundation to protect the insulation. There's insulation at the bottom and we want to protect it. So now you see you've got the layer of cement board on this side and all the other sides, which is 12 inches tall. It protects the insulation. So that's awesome. Do we have another perspective? A little bit of uh, weed whacking around, a little bit of digging. Um, so the cement, like on the front here, you should see that the cement board gets covers the insulation at the end of the day. Yes, that does. Cement board is painted white, so this is uh, actually right now what you'll see at the bottom of the house with a little bit of the vinyl flashing, that the, the water detail. And you see the anchors, like in the corners, you see the those anchors, like right there. Um, which we wrap around. I noticed that they're kind of, probably a hammer does it, but we kind of like um, whack it around with a hammer. So how do you do, let's Google um, how to bend mud sill. Those are called mud sill anchors. Um, I don't know if they're going to show installation here. These are Simpson strong tie mud sill anchors is it the block uh so they also, should, yeah also, anchors are all nice. always check the mud sill anchor doesn't move or drop into the concrete route deeper than necessary while the concrete route is still wet this can happen when the concrete route is too wet so that's what also, we did also some anchors allow for alternate installations before you begin alternate installation though when you install the mask correctly the embedded portion is fully submerged in concrete and the straps are outside the concrete mm -hmm. so you can perform alternate installation is to place the straps on the installed and then how do you bend them around the preferred maybe they, they don't show you how I actually bend make it around. Sure the anchor but yeah, I think a hammer, hammer will do it. They're kind of strong, like by hand, you can hardly... It's it's hard, they're stiff. They're definitely anchors for tying things down. Okay, um, just a brief note on that. On collaborative CAD flow, let's start looking at mastering the basics of free CAD. So once again, just simple... Um, some questions. How do you draw... I mean, these are just super basic questions, but I think we need to build on these super basic questions. How do you draw a sketch in Sketcher? Do you know how to get into the Sketcher workbench? Yeah, I mean, everyone does that. Do you know that you can con hit the constraint buttons for lengths, vertical, horizontal? A very useful one is the point constraint, where we constrain to the origin in order to work in a uniform zero, zero plane. How do you select a sketch for editing once a sketch is complete? Double click on a sketch and it turns red. Uh, so let's let's do that as we speak. So I'll open up FreeCAD and I'll demonstrate just rapid sharing. Like we can actually tag team like this uh, without much much sweat. What do I do here? No, I'll, I'll yeah open up FreeCAD 16 and then um, how do you do a sketch? What workbench do you guys start a sketch in? <clears throat> Part design. Part design. Good. You also have Sketcher workbench, but it doesn't have the other part design stuff in there. So we do a sketch. Um, what plane? X, Y. So let's simulate a workflow where we're building a panel, because we're going to start putting in electrical right now. Just six of us, just five of us, or Matt, if you want to join us. I'm going to do it. This is our panel. I'm going to start. There's two people in the zone. Okay, where do I go here? 
Um, Matt, can you? Oh, you're good. What, what are you asking me to do? Approve people. Just admit is what it means. Oh, you, you, since I'm not a host anymore, I, I can't do it, remember? Where do I admit? It's on the top right of the top of the window. Uh, top of the window, it says somebody enters the waiting room. So you can click admit. There. Okay. Cool. We're getting fluent and free cat and, and rapid exchange of information and, and just using a simple exercise. In FreeCAD, I'm going to do do a panel and then we're going to add an electrical box so I'm going to start this I'm in sketcher and we'll, we'll see how people navigate this done I did it okay so this is our sample electrical electrical great how do I share this with you guys you can quickly go into any place on a wiki and a useful thing to do so anywhere on a wiki so I go to my log. But there's an upload file right now. I'm going to do that. And then you can go. So right now I'm going to share this. And I'll do I want you to download it. And all you guys too, you can practice that as well. So I got electrical. I did that. Upload file. It's there. How do you find it? Go to recent wiki changes. And you can see it right there. Recent wiki changes is top left navigation bar within the wiki. And then download that. Who wants to download that? Tell me. Uh, the one that just says upload log. Yes, to the right of that says file electrical.fcstd. It doesn't say that. It doesn't? Um, it says upload. Really? Uh, to, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That one. This one. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, oh, oh, I see, I see. Um, as an admin, I, I see a little different, right, okay, but yeah, it's in a, if you click on, when you upload log, so I just uploaded something, so it shows it as 1334, upload log, it says Marchin just did that, so you click on that, I'm going to log in again, because as admin, I actually see the file within the, the version, uh, within the recent history, I see it, if you look at my screen, I actually see it right there, without clicking on upload, log okay first person to download it and open it tell me <clears throat> who's the first including remote people can can do it take the file open it and now extrude uh, it to uh, no add dimensions add dimensions because right. we're going to put in an elect for our first electrical box so do just do just one so we're going to go rapidly back and forth uh, uh, go. We're making a real panel, so we're we're doing a 48. Just do a block panel, 48 by 96, and then upload it as quick as you can. And the first person to download it, raise your hand. And how do the remote people raise their hand? They can speak up or take over. Let's see. Is that possible? Uh, do I have to extrude it or just? Get me a get us the 5.5 frame that we have right now. Well, but before you do that, now just one thing at a time. You just define one one dimension, like 48 by nine. Did you do 48 by 96? Yes. Okay. Give it to the next person. Save that and give it to the next person. I want to see. Share your screen. I want to see what you're doing. Oh. And we all want to share. Uh, please all share screens so that as you're speaking, we can follow what you're doing and give you oh. feedback. So let's learn this so we're super efficient at it. Um, I'm trying to find my my screen here. It's kind of hard to navigate on a single monitor because we've got a few. So, uh, right, are you seeing my screen? Uh, are you seeing my screen? Yeah, we have to switch to, switch to yours, but... It just crashed. No, it doesn't like me switching screens, so... 
Okay, so just extrude and make it transparent. So we got four by eight, and once again, this is nominal, this is not real to our panel because we should be 95 point, this is second floor. It would really be 95.6 to five, if you remember that. Um, so now pat it out. Oh, what was the dimension? 5.5, so it's our standard exterior module, 5.5. And make it transparent. Do you know how to make it transparent? Uh, right click on it, and it has, right double, uh, select the object by double clicking on it, and then Appearance. It's under appearance, oh. and then just hit the transparency up to seventy or something. Yeah. So we just see the the contour of it, the basically the the placeholder. Now, uh, have we s fixed it to to the origin? Okay. Upload it. Save upload. Have you fixed it to the origin yet? Yeah. Okay. So let's do that as the next step. That's a it's an important one. How do you so how do you make something transparent? We have to know that. And um, a 3D object transparent. How do you upload a quick share to the wiki? We're doing like a quick share. We're not documenting it on any page. We just said, okay, we just uploaded this file. Use, use it effectively as a Dropbox kind of a thing. Okay, um, okay, next person, uh, Prince, you want to download it? So now if I click on electrical, I see already, yep, there's Marchand, Can, Dundo, good, so we see the whole trail. So how would you, how do you now... Can you change the sketches underneath it? Yeah. yeah, you can. You can. You can by double clicking on the sketch. Now, um, so fix the bottom left point to the origin. How do we do that? Zoom in on the corner point there. Is this the origin right here? Or the That's the dimension arrow. So the origin would be bottom left if we did it in the XY plane. That's just a grid. The origin should be where the... It should be the red lines, like you see the red line in the grid, and then the, that one. So go left, not, not that one, the one to the left. But how do you know the actual coordinate? Is there a pointer coordinate measurement anywhere within FreeCAD? I don't know about that one. But we know it's bottom left, like the XY origin in a Cartesian system is bottom left, like you see the little uh, XYZ arrows in the bottom right corner. Well, XY0 would be bottom left corner. So, so zoom in on the bottom left corner. Okay. Okay, so now we have to define, that's another little point that was just pointed out. How do you zoom in infinitely? Uh, it's the scroll, but how do you make it not fall out of your window? Because if you do, how, how do you do that? 
because if you zoom in like it's likely to start shifting out how do you make it not shift out of view uh, the way you do it is if you whichever side of what you're doing you're zooming on you have to go to the other side if it starts going out of view it zooms in depending on the geometry it zooms in it depends on where your cursor is so prints demonstrate that so zoom out okay go to so t tell you what take your cursor go to the bottom left of the zoom window and see what happens there Z start zooming see it co goes out of view right yeah. but if you selected zoom very close to it it would zoom in on its on it so now if you zoom in like for example upper left it will go to the bottom right you see that you see what's happening there mm -hmm. yeah. where you zoom in where your cursor is depend determines how are you zooming in so so w with those techniques can you now zoom in infinitely to the origin because we're trying to find out well first of all okay so you have to go on the other side and zoom in from the other side okay so basically you have to go like one side or the other side of the origin point left side or right side okay uh, maybe I can demonstrate upload it okay that's it that's good close it save it upload it that's good enough I'll demonstrate this is important if you want to get precise alignment very quickly without having to do any constraints so just control s yeah so that's an important one how do you zoom in infinitely without that you're not gonna be able to, to navigate documents well So I'm going to download Prince's one, and then already Justin has uploaded something else, which is basically like they edited it at the same time. But I downloaded that one. Oh, wait. Go into my existing FreeCAD. I'm running FreeCAD. You see the... Let me share my screen. So what I'm doing here, like in the... This is Linux, oh, I see Linux 16.04, the V1. Now here you got FreeCAD that's 18 by, I just run double click on the FreeCAD app image that's that works in. Is that thing there? Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna open it. Okay, infinite zoom. What I'm gonna do, so you see the zoom, right? So when I'm on this side, it goes that way. If I'm on that side, it goes that way. If I'm on this side, it goes that way. So I keep going around it, and and I'm like infinitely zoomed now. Like if it goes that way, go go this way. I'm still zooming, so I'm way zoomed in right now. But you see the point? Yeah. Depending on which side, so I'm zooming. It's way zoomed in. That's like super tiny, like maybe nanometers at that point um, so zoom in this way it moves upper right I go here it moves lower left if I go here it goes that way if I go here it goes back the other way does that make sense mm -hmm. so you keep keep zooming in like if it falls out of view I don't know, is that intuitive or not? I guess you, you have to get used to it, but you can zoom in infinitely that way. So now I would look at the sketch. Well, we're actually seeing that that sketch appears to be aligned with the origin. Because, I mean, I'm zooming in pretty pretty far and I don't see anything there. So this is, I think the green tells us already that... It's on the origin, but it's not fixed to the origin. It's not? 
Okay, so. Oh, you can move it? So now I actually did that. No, I can't. Can I? I can't move the sketch. Uh, so I should see this under constraints. And so we're looking at how do you observe what the constraints are? Well, uh, there's four points there. And then this one looks like maybe that's the origin constraint. Yeah, that was. So now I can move it. Uh, so I moved it. It's no longer at zero. Okay, I'm going to close that, save it, and upload it. Okay, next person fix it to the origin. Download it, so I'm going to stop sharing. Or I could still keep sharing and people can do it too, right? Or no? Um, Joshua, you want to take over? Yeah, I'm trying to share how to get it. And let's have Matt and and Holger do it. Can you see the recap? No. On my screen. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I have a function of workspace in both places. So. Fix it to the origin now. So this is the origin that we've marked, or is this the origin? Yeah. How do we know which is the origin? Well, you said bottom left in the Cartesian plane. Yes. And then zero, zero also. Would so my next order. question is, in the FreeCAD sketcher window, where are the axes? The green and the red line. There you go. It's the same color as uh, the bottom right. Screen. Yes. Yeah, so you can correlate that. In the bottom right corner, you have the axes. So the sketch is uh, constrained. You can move, shift things around. That's a way to move things. So this is editable. Now, once you start making more edits, we'll see what happens there. Okay. Um, you got it. <clears throat> Well, oh, you gotta no, no, hold on, hold on. What do you need to do here? You need to close. You're in edit mode right now. So, but you see what it moved. Moved to your place, okay? Okay, do it. Okay, so it moved after you closed the edit. Yeah. Okay. That's so now you're at the origin. You're constrained. This is the location where we want to design modules, so it's simple. You know where you're at. Uh, when I was working with Prince, for example, we were making things happen but they were like padding out in a different direction or things were moving around weird see it, it just like keep it to here it just says the zeros all the way out of the bottom okay. uh, where, uh, where like, do you see that if you hover like the bottom left corner um, try to get it perfectly like that that root point uh, where do you see the right that's the root point but where where do you see the coordinates being displayed they're on the bottom left they're really small See it, um, Point your cursor to it, where uh, the right coordinates here. were. Oh, there. Yeah, I can hardly yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah. See, but that's that's like you can move your mouse around, and you know, you, the further off you get, the more. Um, now, is that only in a Python console? Because no. you got the Python console. No, it's not. This okay. Is, yeah. This is toolbar at the bottom. And I think also normally. Uh, it, it also appears uh, near your cursor on the on the sketch. You have it in brackets. Yeah.
Okay, that's you mean in the basically like the bottom there. Whenever you click on a hover over a point, it gives you coordinates, right? So the next question would be, so that we answer the question, how do you know the coordinate of a point? And that is hover over it and look at the bottom left of your screen. Okay. How do you determine the coordinates of a point? That's important. Okay. Uh, so next, uh, keep moving here. So, uh, constraint. Next person, uh, Matt. You want to try it? D upload and download. Yeah, so So you got to close and save and upload. So this kind of workflow could be relevant like if you're you know, say you're talking to somebody on the phone even ah, I mean you could you could be sketching out things like if, you, if this is fluid you can be sharing things like that readily um, it's useful. So let's move on to the electrical box that we're gonna put into this and we'll talk about electrical design just a little bit. So we're gonna talk about concept and we're gonna put it right into this this CAD. So it's there. Matt, you want to download it? As you do that, um, Matt, are you still there? Is Matt on? I don't hear him. I don't hear you, Matt. Uh, hold your or Matt. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Now we can. Uh, try to download it. Yeah. Uh, and we'll can you? I, I have it. Do you not see it on my screen? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yep. So, 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 so. let's take a... Let's discuss the elect, electric part. So, uh, we have a utility channel at the bottom. So, why don't we rip out a utility channel? Because this is what's going to be, um, like, physically speaking, we'll have the when we do the panel the entire interior is still not on the exterior is and why is that because an electrical then electrical inspection guy needs to look at the interior that's one of the reasons there are other reasons like we're using overlapping on interior panels for very clean edges so we don't want to put it put the panels on until the all the frames are up and also because we're putting the framing in um, you wouldn't know where the studs are if the if you're putting one interior wall panel against the outside you're not going to know where the studs are so it's another reason to keep the interior paneling off so there's various reasons the code inspection is the number one if we talk about building this in real life because you have to consider that there's an electrical inspection and they inspect your rough electrical so that's that's the reason so this panel will not have the so say it's finished it's it might have we might put an in insulation the exterior panel as well as the house wrap and so let's let's pre-wire a switch let's say so Matt why don't you draw us um, so we've got this thing oh yeah now this thing did not retain Transparency or did it? No, it did. It did retain it. So let's draw a new sketch on the XY plane. We're going to have an electrical box that that we put in and it's like it goes into the panel and we're going to attach it to a, say, a left stud. So it could be a switch. What you do is you put in electrical boxes where then you put in a switch, you can put in an outlet into it. So um, let's see if 
let me see if I can actually share. If I share my screen, do people can people select between Matt's and mine or? Yeah. Yeah. If you take a look at mine, so what's an electrical box? What is that? We typically use these blue ones like this. They nail into a stud. So we do one of these. What's their dimensions? I forget what exactly they are, but let's do Matt, why don't we do one of these? Draw a box that's two by four inches and as deep as the actual wall, so make it 5.5 .5 deep. Uh, so draw that shape and as you do that, because your sketch is editable, we can move it to the right place later, but let's discuss where do we put it. So we, we know one piece of information that's going to have to be next to a stud because those nails, we actually nail those nails in like you see there. In this case, these nails would go into a right side stud. If you flip this box upside down, you would nail them into left side stud if you're looking at it. So where are we going to put it? There's a specific height you need to do, forget what it is, but we did start for electrical design. Maybe we can find an electrical design guide. So a little lesson as we put in our first box, because then we have to determine which, yeah, there is some stuff here, so electrical design guide, overview, Here's like all the bubbles that contain all the elements of our electrical as it stands. So I've got not only just wires and things and electrical boxes, but also appliances like there's a heat pump, induction cooktop, outlets, breakers, wiring for PV, uh, fat pipe going into the house from the street, lights, etc. Here's the initial concepts of the utility channel. Uh, without getting overloaded here, so we got standard wire, house wire. That the when you buy it in a store, you buy 20 amp wire that's yellow. This white one that's 15 amp. So here's these electrical boxes. They're like you see here. They're nailed in, and you would have wires going in or, in or out. So so in our system. So we can get into details like that. So here what they show is like these holes through the, the studs, which we're not doing. That's um, what else to say here. This is kind of like this. We have the rough version of this. This is how a professional, this is something like this. We're going to have to draw this up for our house where you show like the lines going to which light goes to where and like what are all your appliances. We're going to have to generate the equivalent for our house. Um, what's you can take a look at this this document which references code sections and and like basically it says you have to have so many outlets you have to have so many lights you have to have breakers and so the National Electric Code NEC for dummies kind of try to extract the most important things um, but in the simplest instance, it's what we're doing here. Like, it boils down to, let's say, Matt's screen. So Matt, um, yeah. Okay. So you got this box. What we're gonna do is, in any panel that has electrical, which is a lot of them we're going to have at least two boxes. So one is a junction box and this goes back into um, utility channel design. So in a in the wall, wall modules design guide so under for example under build wall modules design guide goes through the, what the utility channel looks like and whenever there's a panel where we have 
electrical. So we're going to actually select a panel. So if you look, let me share my screen again. Um, so the question for Matt is, okay, so we've got this electrical junction. Where does it go on a panel? In a panel that has electrical, because not all panels have electrical. So you look at our, let's say take the first floor here, first floor, floor power outlets. So for example, wall module, this one, this corner here has one 15 amp outlet. It's next to the, next to the windows. <coughs> uh, that is module number 17. So say we're working on, we, we download module 17, which we've probably done. We open it up, but we got to place these light boxes in there. Light box, well, the first junction boxes. Okay. So we're module 17. We see we've got a 15 amp outlet. Where does it go? Well, let's look at the utility channel design here in the index. So I'm going to go to utility channel. This is what we need to know. So what do we got in the wall? We, in that one, we just have an outlet. Okay. So so this is um, this is what we're looking at. This is the ge generic concept of a panel with electrical. We're going to have one junction box, which has a wire running it from the breaker box. Where do you put it? And there's going to be a middle stud. Well, there's going to be studs like in a regular panel. You've got two in the middle. So this this would be next to a stud because you got to uh, nail it into a stud. So, Matt. Let's have you put that one that one in. The concept here is so in in the con. Let me just copy this. Uh, I'm going to copy this into the current working docs so we we have a reference. Um, so this was our exercise. So we're going to do this, Matt. Uh, we're not. We're going to have a light there. We're just going to have a plain, plain thing, plain panel with just an outlet. We want to wire up this outlet. So you, you do have this outlet at the, at the bottom. Forget about the switch. There will be light switches and things like that. So we're going to do this. So we've got the exterior panel. This is looking at the inside. We have two things. One is the junction box, and then there's an outlet. What we're going to have is wires going to the. So from your. <clears throat> your electrical breaker panel, the main panel which the fat pipe from the house uh, from the street goes into, you're going to have one wire out of one breaker going into this junction box. And then, so this wire here is not there yet, we're going to put it in later. But right now we do want to put in this wire here from this junction box. We're just making a point of connection, so we'll, we'll have this, a wire going to here, a, an outlet plugged into this electrical box. So let's take this copy image. There's going to be an electrical box there. Now what's what's at the outlet? Same thing. These boxes can hold whatever. It could be just you connecting wires inside there and put a cover on it. You can put a switch on it. You can put a light socket even. You can put a, an outlet. Just a plain outlet. So this is kind of boxes. What that's going to be in the second box here. That's also going to be the same thing. The outlet box. They're they're both identical parts. So Matt, let's have you do design this one in here. So put it in a, actually in a re realistic position. So um, just a quick quick design exercise. So I'm going to sh stop sharing. So where are you going to put it? Next to a stud. You got to attach it somewhere. We're attaching it to the framing, not like any of the paneling. Uh, the way they're, they're designed, they're supposed to attach to the side, like the nails show. Um, so, so do I need to draw in the studs? Yeah, so just let's just, um, yeah, let's locate it actually. So, so our exercise is we're going to do this positionally correct outlet box that we know now works for that panel. Um, so 
let's do an exercise of measuring how how would you locate it if you know that you're for like say on a right hand side of the left hand stud like the left the middle stud so you have to think about it what's what are the dimensions there yeah. we know we have 14 inch cavities 15.5 if you're measuring from the edge then you add another 1.5 right because of the other uh, stud on the out yeah yep so if you can picture that in your mind, you've got studs that go, there's one stud on the left-hand side, and we didn't draw those details in, because this is just an exercise, but just, just to show you how to locate. So then there's this stud, so your outlet box is gonna go next to it. Um, well, you guys are not sh seeing my screen. Um, I'm gonna share screen again. Matt, if you wanna take a look at that. So you got this, I'm going to close this one down. Close this one. So you got your studs. You want to, so that means you determine the position of this outlet like next to this, this stud here, both of them. You got to attach them. That's where they're going to be. So Matt, why don't you do the bottom junction box? And, and when you said that the, there was a 14 inch cavity, what, 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 what is the cavity you're referring to when you say that? The spacing between the studs. Are right between this. Yeah. I'm exactly. trying to move this arrow here. So the distance between the two studs. We know this. This is panel basics is 14 inches between for regular. That that distance there is 14 inches. And that's from our one of the facts we have to know about the panels, 14 inches. But you can also calculate it. If you didn't know 14 inches, how do you calculate it? So I'm going to put that as so in our in our information the base information we have to know we came up with a big list of things yesterday we can keep adding to it like for example how do you calculate the spacing of an insulation bay that's a question that's a good exam question final exam uh, how do you calculate the width of an insulation bay for regular interior or exterior panels, it's the same. So know how to answer that question. You'd come up with 14 if you if you take 48 minus the width of four studs, which is six. Divide by three since there's three bays. 48 minus six is 42. Divide by three is 14. So Matt, why don't you place that at, now you're at 14 plus 1.5 plus 1.5, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to create a little shape that's just yeah. 15 and a half inches by nowhere to go. Well, 14 plus 6, plus 3, it's going to be 17 on. Wow. So, the sh so, so the next question for FreeCAD is, when you have a design somewhere, how do you measure an exact distance? Well, you can do a position line. But can we also read that dimension off the bottom left of the screen? Which one would you prefer? That's Matt. Can you try read position your? If you look, if you double click on your sketch, so I want to look at your screen now. Let's try this. I mean, we close this. We're trying to say we're going to locate this. Our question is, we're doing CAD. We're learning how to do it rapid. How do we do it? I would. I'd put a constraint wherever we need to put it at so that you can draw the object and constrain it to it. Oh, I, you okay. can check it with you the could body, do that. But. Yeah. Um, constraint between the point zero and that bottom left corner, say, of your your electrical box, sketch. So there's some details there. There's your go and double click on the sketch. You put a constraint between the bottom left corner of your outlet box and the origin. And then you measure just the horizontal distance. Matt, oh, right. does that sound good to you? Did you follow that? Sort of, but why would it be from the origin? You mean like 0 0.00? Well, shouldn't it be from the side? Yes, yeah, so exactly, but the dimension arrows in FreeCAD are atomic. They're just one dimension. So if you measure from the origin, it will still be... 17 in the x direction really I'm not. yes huh. 
Okay. Well, it's 17 in an x direction and something in a y direction, but it's still 17 in an x direction, right? That's geometry. Yeah. yeah. That's Cartesian coordinates. Like there's the hypotenuse, which is larger in this triangle that we create, but um, do people understand hypotenuse? So coming out of yeah, the but triangle, but coming out from the corner, you have yeah. a, like the, is it the tangent line? Or it's the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. But, hypotenuse and then you have the 90 degree angle that's formed when it hits the bottom from wherever it's at, up in the air. Okay. So, um, Let's let, let's do so. Matt, you drew this dimension arrow. How about we we um, you can do that. We already constrained this thing to the. Let's do you you got it. Just uh, take that take that line and measure your box location by measuring against against that line. That's one way to do it, and we're trying to find right. a better way to do it. So do that. Move that line so that you can then place the outlet where you need it. Right. So then, wait to move it. I need to. How do you, how do you select that line to move it? You got to double click on its sketch. Just no, no. For sketches, okay. So next question, how do you move a sketch? Double click on a sketch. So that's a FreeCAD basics point. Oh, yeah. How do you move a sketch? And then I can click and drag? Yes, exactly. Well, you're, it, you're, it? you're making dimensions happen. Click on, um, uh, well, first of all, select that to be four, uh, we said 17. So do 17. You got to click on the number. Okay, so how do you edit an existing dimension of a feature? You can only do that by double clicking on that number. You cannot start adding another dimension because then it gives you a conflict. You cannot put two dimensions onto the same thing. So double click on the 1.41. Now it's, yeah. Let's make it 17. Yeah. So the question there is how do you change an existing dimension in Sketcher? You double click on a number and it'll give you a dialog box. Okay, so you change it to 17? Oh, yeah. yeah so it, it's just depicting it as 1.4 feet. Okay, cool. But so you would have to change, yeah, that's another issue. Uh, so let's not get into that. So you've got a 17 inch line. Uh, how do you locate your box with it? How do you how do I move, move the location of a line? So that's another Freak Out Basics question. You, you simply click on it and drag it. Click on it and drag it. Or do you have to click on the point? Oh, what's happening there? Uh, so you, you drew a box, so you actually... Ex but that still works, just do it. Hmm. Yeah. And okay. yeah, so... But in order to be any accurate, you want to zoom in on a point, which was the point we just discussed before. How do you zoom in infinitely to, to get an accurate location? So you can zoom in. But this is just about right. Just do that for the point of the exercise. So now you're going to move the box. How do you move the box? I have to get to that sketch. Yeah, edit it, sketch, and just drag it. Um, so one question is, how do you move a sketch in a sketcher? <coughs> edit and drag. Edit, select, and drag. So now you're going to double click, and this, this is where labels would be helpful, like your electrical box, you want to label it as electrical box, but go to the one that's the pad, it's going to be not the sketches, it's going to be one of the pads, it's going to be pad, uh, pad or pad uh, zero, zero, that's it. Now click yeah. on that arrow and it will exp expand to its sketch, so double click on its sketch. So a uh, simple question of basics might be, how do you find, how do you select a sketch a sketch on a 3D object that has a sketch? And what's the answer? Click on the, what's that? What's the answer? Click on the arrow to expand. 
Yeah, click on the arrow to expand. Expand, then select the sketch. Yeah. Right. So now how do you move it? The same answer as before. Click on its feature and drag it. When click you say on its feature, what do you mean? I click on a point, click on a side, and drag it. Just drag it. Mm. That's it. Done. Save and upload. So you located, you succeeded in locating that. Close. And then the box jumps over to that location. Save and upload. Okay. Um, okay. So we've located it uh, on a stud. So we know it's actually going to be somewhere on a, on a stud location. Okay, so last person, we're going to locate it in the proper location up and down within the uh, utility channel. So you have to consider things. Okay, how big is the utility channel and things like that. Okay, uh, save and upload. And next person is going to locate it properly up, up and down. So this, we just found out that the electrical junction boxes are not going to be in the center because there's no studs there. They're going to be off to one side or another. Now, can you put this on the other side of the stud? Yeah, sure. But let's make everything uniform. So let's just select this as the as the default, uh, unless we find another reason to put it on another stud where it's maybe more convenient to put it because it's closer to something. But let's just start with this. And if we keep the sketches, we can always move this if we need to. But for now, hey, one side, one stud or the other stud doesn't really matter. The only constraint is you need to be six, any cord that's six feet in length has to reach an outlet. In other words, the outlets must be 12 feet apart or later. That's one of the National Electrical Code rules. Okay, save and upload. Last person. I'm, I'm having an issue. It's, yep. uh, oh. It added like a, a one. Yeah. Uh, Should be sh the end of the. Share your screen still. Let's see. So, I, I save it here. So, just save it. And then what do you do? Uh, go go to FreeCAD and click on the go to the wiki and click on it. Upload then, warning. It yeah. says what? This already this exists. No, just ignore it. It thinks you're oh, uploading right. the same file. All right, all right. Um, yeah, but you changed some things, so it's not the same file. Okay. Unless you're uploading your original. <laughs> but right. anyway, ah. we should see it. The next person's going to verify that. So who wants to go next? Uh, last person. Let's get Paul. Now we're going to locate this properly up, up and down within the the wall module. So for that we're gonna have to go back to where? The wall module design guide where we talk about the utility channel or just go to our document. We we have the utility channel detail on page. In the current working doc we have 17, 18, 19 with the utility channel or basically the blocking which determines the utility channel location. So uh, it's gonna be page 19 of the current day 13 working doc so we know we have a cavity there that's 8.5 and you should re remember that number so where do we put that outlet box there's not no really not really rules for how far off the floor you want to have it off the floor so you, if you spill something you don't get electrical shorts but I would say like maybe put it as high up in that cavity as we can. I don't know. Does it matter? I, I don't think there's any special consideration outside. It has to. It should be off the floor. But no, that doesn't. That's not even true because you're actually allowed to make in-floor outlets as well. But to make it convenient, I don't know. Just put it halfway in the cavity, wherever. And therefore, what would it be? Well, um, We have corners of that box. Why don't we just put it like right under the blocking? Um, so the first floor. Um, so it's. You can't get it wrong. A quarter. 
Yeah, around the quarter. Well, so then it would be like four. And well, here's uh, you looking at slide 19. No, I'm just it's 8.5 for the cavity that we have, but it's 1.5 off the bottom. Right. So it's 10. But okay, so say we're building it. Let's let's eliminate the measurement. Let's just put it right against the blocking. We already have the blocking there. Just put it there. So you have to know that the blocking is 8.5 up. Well, it's 10 up from the base of the module. If you look at slide 19. Uh, can you share your screen? So can you download and share your screen so we see what you're doing and we can comment. So we're locating the electrical box up and down. We know we have a standard dimension of the box. Can you say the file name again? The electrical.fc. Go into the recent changes, and you should be the last thing up. Recent changes on the wiki on the left-hand tab. Recent wiki changes. So that's how you can coordinate for drop box-like functionality on the wiki. So click on upload log. And it's the one that's electrical, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Okay, this working pre-pad 19 or switch to 16? Switch to 16. How does it work in VirtualBox? Do you see lagginess or is it good? Or? Uh, it's probably a little bit slower than it would be natively, but for most things, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. It's not so useful if you can get a version of Yeah. So what we're doing with electrical boxes, these are the junction boxes. We're going to run those wires from the breaker box to that, but everything after the junction box, so the wire from the electrical box, the breaker box, is not included, but in the module we are going to wire, like we have that outlet. So this is the junction box, which is going to have a wire going to the outlet that's in the wall module. Is that junction box just like a safety net to the outlet? The idea is that in electrical code, any connection has to be made within junction boxes for safety reasons. Yeah. So you don't have like loose wires and their protected level of protection. There's somewhat like insulate fire protective as well. Um, uh, I would ask. So are the, go ahead. So, so are you saying that like the panel you'll like pre-wire from like the outlet to the box like vertically? You just won't put in the horizontal wire going through the bottom of it until. Um, the electrician is looked. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Are people hearing Matt? Okay. Matt asked, are we pre-wiring the panel itself, but are we leaving the wire to that panel off? And that's exactly what we're doing. We're pre-wiring the panels themselves because typically that's just another long process. If you had to wire the whole house, that's a day or a few days there. Whereas we have that already built upon module install which means that to run the wires is just a very small step at the, after the walls are up which allows for parallel workflow uh, just a fa much faster build we're pre-wiring that at the factory so you've got your modules that already have electrical in them so the junction boxes are going to have wires and then we're going to put the modules and then connect the outlets to the junction boxes is that uh, we're connecting the the junction box the the outlets to the junction boxes the at the, junction the box to like the main line once we're at the house. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so Matt, that's why I was giving you that warning. You you miss saved. You uh, saved the or whatever you did it doesn't seem like you uploaded the right thing. So FreeCAD was it. actually right. Not FreeCAD. The the wiki was actually right. You did upload the same file. Uh, it appears. Well, that's okay. You missed re-upload. Yeah, re-upload it. Matt, are you doing that? I didn't hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I changed the name just for my see if that would help with an issue I'm having uh, on this thing. Let's try that. Yeah, and it's actually, uh, that's yeah, we actually sh could have picked that up by saying, okay, if it, that was 5K, you added a feature and it's still 5K. Yeah, that, that was actually a, we should have picked that up in our quality control right there. <clears throat> so Even though, like, it didn't increase from the former ones. Okay, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, should I make a sketch to vertically space it? Yeah, yeah, so that would be a good thing. We know that... Now I'll ask, what's a convenient, which corner can you measure against that's a known... So say we want to install this and we don't want to measure anything. Well, we've got the blocking there, let's put it against the blocking. So you can measure that distance. So what is that distance to the blocking? So it's 1.5 one one from the base plate because of the base plate and then mm -hmm. the bottom spacing is going to a quarter. Uh, 8.5? Yeah, 8 we're talking about first floor or second floor? This is an 8-foot panel, so it's second floor. Okay, so second floor is 8.5. Okay. Yeah. Where's the 9 and a quarter coming from, though? Because yeah, we had like 10 and 5 eighths on top and then nine and a quarter on the bottom for the nine footers. Uh, exterior. So if you look at 18, you're saying is the, or 17, that's not right? No, wait, 17, 18, 18. Those are the window lines. You're on a day 13 working doc? Yeah. Page 18? Or page 18. So, Yeah, it wouldn't be a nine and a quarter, it's 10.125. 10, 10 I think we use different measurements. I'm pretty sure we did because the spacers in the mm. workshop are different. I see nine and a quarter. We start with a nine and a quarter. Yeah. Uh, that does work. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, but then the, the locations of the electrical boxes, if we use that, may be different if we don't have consistency on that. Okay. Um, so maybe in a final run through. Uh, we had the nine and a quarter, and do we continue that throughout? We never went to ten point one two five. Okay. It, that's yeah. the other part. It may have okay. been that for some of them, because I think we. Did. So we can check that, and if they're off, then we can just 
move that because now it turns out okay if we use the blocking as a locating point for the outlets that means some of the outlets will be at different heights just a little bit um, but we should probably make them equal well nine and a quarter compared to ten point one to five like about this much hardly notice it but we should probably make it make it consistent we can do that through the final quality control thing yeah. Uh, coincident at one point. Like if I wanted to align the bottom of the sketch with the bottom of the the panel, like this extruded this pad. Really it would have to be in the same sketch. <clears throat> Uh, so, mm -hmm. the bottom of the yeah. Minus how do we end up doing that? If we, I don't know how we end up doing that because I think we we located uh, the point. So that means maybe one person did not upload. Something something happened, but. Exactly. That's it. So you've got the correct location. Now, what you want to do is move the box. So how do you move a 3D object that's got a sketch? You move its sketch. So edit the sketch and just drag it. Now you got turned all white on us here. Oh, so probably hide the. You're probably seeing the panel. Hide the panel then. I would say that's the first pad. Yeah, if you hide the panel, then you you'll probably be able to. Yeah, now you can see your sketch. Now, which corner are you aligning? So you can select a line or a point, and just drag it. Does this select the line? Just if you n no, I'll just click on the line itself, or click on a corner. If you click on a corner, you can drag the corner. So, yeah, there you go. Ken says something. Yeah, it should. You're moving it up, so you're moving it right into the blocking. It has to be below. Mm -hmm. So just click and drag, uh, click and hold and drag the, drag the sketch. The sketcher is very convenient. Like my first five minute video, I just blew through like a bunch of these sketcher things. And yeah, you can you can use the sketcher to simulate range of motion because you can fix one point and rotate another point. So that simulates like say the articulation of a backhoe and things like that. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Um, that's it. Uh, save it and upload it. I want to do just one thing. I want to see if we could do this same what we did without measuring measuring lines by just looking at the coordinate points. So uh, I'll download it and I'll see if I can show that because uh, I'm curious. Because I I know that these sketch lines when you always have to draw them it's it's inconvenient. So let's see if we can optimize that. Okay, so I'll download that one, electrical one. I'll share my screen. So uh, we located it. Now what if we didn't have the sketches? What happens then? So I'm going to quit out of the former ones. So I, I keep my thing clean here. So the first pad was our was our location. I'm gonna check if we're at zero. Yeah, we're still at zero there. That's good. So I don't know. Like when you mentioned negative something, shouldn't be. Uh, so if I click on that line there, I'm seeing y and z are zero zero. So I'm looking at the coordinate points. 
So say I, I select the box, so, well first of all let's hide this one. Let's select the box, let's remove the, ske the locating sketches. Um, so get rid of that sketch. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. This is my delete. Okay. Can I actually look at the, the location of this point and be correct? So I'm going to drag that. I'm going to try to replicate what you did without measuring. Well, I think I can do it. So I'm going to go to 10. I'm going to look at the, the dimensions at the very bottom. And is that practical? So I'm moving this thing around. And I'm seeing, well, I think I'm in different coordinates. Let's see. Edit preferences. Units. No, that's the right coordinates. So I'm trying to say, OK, I'm clicking on that point. I'm looking at the coordinates. And I'm getting some weird values like 486 and 171. So I give up. Uh, why is this not working? Like, can I? I was expecting that if I click on that sketch, I'm looking at the bottom coordinates, and it's giving me weird numbers. So, does anyone have a suggestion of why that's happening? I don't know. Are those in inches? Well, the coordinates are in inches. Uh, the the dimensions are in inches, but what it appears is that. Is that? Let's see, like if I'm there. Yeah, 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 it's giving me millimeters for some reason. Um, so maybe there's some setting. Yeah, I see it because if I click on this point now, I'm getting y equals about 100, which is 4 inches. So for some reason, I'm getting that in millimeters. In your preferences, you selected it was imperial slope. Yeah. Right. So is the other imperial? US customary? US customary. How about that? No, it's still, for some reason, it's giving me millimeters, and I don't know. Um, maybe that's a bug. Um, Did you click apply when you changed the. Preferences? Yeah. Oh. Maybe let's go back to this one. And, okay. That's the, we just say that use a, they just say use a calculator on the forum. Because <laughs> it all no. works. That, no, I don't know. So, okay. We'll leave it at that. You have but. To restart <clears throat> pre oh, yeah? Starting at 7. Oh, uh, 17. Starting at 17. So let's see if that worked. If I restart, I'm on. Well, I'm on 16. So let's see if I open the file again. Will I see the sketch? appear in correct dimensions. No, I'm still getting millimeters and stuff, so... Okay, so leave it at that, but ideally you would click on a point and you can locate it, like, if you're working from the origin, it's clear to identify, like we said, oh, okay, well that corner is going to be 10 inches up, so I just move it wherever it then ends up being 10 inches. However, those coordinates I'm seeing not updating in real time, only when you release, so it's a little difficult, I would say. Um, but we have the sketch markers. I don't know of any other way. Well, we can locate, if we had the blocking in there, then it would be just like in the real build. You move it right up against it. But short of that, I don't know of a good way to align things uh, outside of just doing position sketches. So that's the current workflow that we do know. Um, but if these coordinates do work, yeah, then we're, we're good on those too. Can you move the position manually and the value? 
Uh, I see. Um, so say for the sketch, we select the sketch placement. Sure. Oh, okay, okay. And that looks like. Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. That's how I do so, a master diagram. I don't, there are no sketches to line them. Like, mm. All the other ones are precisely 240 inches. Or okay, so I've got this one uh, in the placement. Position. Well, that's weird though, because it's getting me zero, zero, zero for all of those, which is weird. So, what if I? So that's bugs here. That that that's, looks like bugs. I think that's the object's origin, though. Like you drew the object where it was, so that's where it starts at. But it's not well, it's not relative to the actual origin of the grid. It's like uh, not a relative origin of the sketch. Okay, yeah, so maybe. Like oh, okay, okay. So it's gonna think that that's where it's. So what I can do is I can do this. And go to. Okay, that's a cool trick. So go to. Uh, go to part design and then constrain the origin and stuff. Do this, and now I should be good. So now I'm at the origin. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the origin. And you see a little bit of the red line there. That's the X. And okay. So now I should be able to do X was 17. And Y was, well, it's going to be the bottom of that box, and I don't know how big the box is. Uh, yeah, oh, it was four. So, so maybe. So, did we do it? Oh, uh, so now I moved somewhere. Where did that move? So if we take a look at that, and uh, just moved it, yeah, it did move it to, it looks like it did move it, I, I'm looking at the coordinates, well, we can check, did it, oh yeah, looks like it worked. So if we put the positions, and then I can just verify, so is that top at, at 10? Yeah, so that worked, so you can move the sketch, if you know its dimensions. And yeah, yeah, so you can do that that way if you're well oriented. But a lot of times you may not know where you need to put it. Um, well, in the cases where you do know where to put it, yeah, you can, you can without sketches. So just use the dimensions. Uh, so that would be a shortcut. So the question for the, just document that. So. Uh, what question do we form from that? It's how do you move, how do you move objects, or how do you align objects without drawing in dimension markers? So that's I think that works. We can say that. How do you move objects? How do you locate objects? Without dimension sketches, use coordinates in the property box under, so for that one, property position. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so details, this is gets into more of all the work, workflows that require careful positioning, and that's the difference between just getting, drawing some random things and, and actually accurate things. Okay. But now we know how to put in basic electrical box located in the panels. We can do something like that. Um, so, let's see. As far as the rest of the little bit of electrical design. 
we practice that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's it. So, so regarding the progress, we're moving far along on the actual house master file, and and to see the latest status, we've got um, looks like a bunch of interior ones that are also being done. So just to check where we're at on that, because we just want to finish those up. And since it rained today, we it's going to be quite muddy out there. We can't really. We could we could go out there to the foundation site again, um, but let's look at where the house assembly master, how that is looking. Mm. Does that look like the latest one? Yeah, well, that's pretty good. Um, but it's not the latest. I know. Uh, I think there's 68, 69 right here. Do we have those? I have 68, but I made them wrong. I made them by 2x6s instead of 2x4s. Mm -hmm. So I got this that. Well, it's looking pretty good. It's coming coming right, right along. The windows we can insert. We know where, where those are. Um, let's see. Is Did I get open the correct file here? So. I've been trying to work on some windows and I'm struggling. Uh, that's Matt speaking. Yeah. Okay. I I am struggling to just like take an existing file and change it. And change it? Okay. Um. It depends. You're talking about one of the module files within the house. Yeah, like I was trying to take the downstairs window and just duplicate that, and then just change the dimensions of the window and stuff. But. Well, it depends that where you got it from because in this model these are not editable anymore because we stripped down the detail we stripped the sketches before uploading to keep memory low so does that answer your question then you have to go back in a version history of the source module which will have the sketches and there you can edit you can edit and then you need to reposition I, it did that. I, th I think it was from there, but maybe still, maybe one of the simpler versions. I'll, I'll, I'll look again. Was the issue that what the it did not have the underlying information, therefore you couldn't change it? No, what? no, it, it had it. It's just that I, I I can't figure out how to manipulate. Like if I want to change the length of one of the two by fours or something, I couldn't figure out how to get it to allow me to make those changes. Were you able to double click on a sketch? Because that's yeah. what we went over just now. We kind of said if you want to edit some 3D object, you can edit the underlying sketch. Well, and it doesn't. I don't think that. I don't see the the sketch. Show show your screen. <laughs> oh, maybe. So the problem statement right now is to fill in the windows, fill in the remaining modules, and. Uh, Try to complete this as much as we can. We can also start working on a on a roof. I can start putting that in. It's it's a box that's similar to the floor, the second story floor. But Matt, share your screen. Yeah, here it is. So I have this thing, and I tried like duplicating the part. And, and so here's this sketch. So if so, the general procedure is for say you've got a module that's in the final CAD. Well, if you want to edit it, you don't go to the final assembly. You go to the source files that you pulled into it. But you have to go to the old versions of the source files, which have the sketches, because the latest sketch, latest module files 
will be simplified and stripped of all info, of all excess info outside of the dumb object that's easy to manage in terms of final assembly because of file size. That's what's going on here. Okay. That does not have any underlying sketches. Those are, okay, so yeah. this brings up to a FreeCAD 101 question. How do you know if a file has underlying sketches? Can't expand any of them. Right. That's the answer. When you see those blocks without the arrow, that means there's nothing underneath it. So I should just keep on working backwards slowly through files until I get to the most recent that has sketches? The notes on that file in the version history or notes above that should tell you which one has the sketches or not. Because that's just basic. Okay. Uh, we're, we're sh we should be annotating, like say we strip the sketches, we say, okay, we remove the sketches, make that a note, either when you upload or after you upload by putting in a note on that page. That helps. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. So one more point, there's two ways to edit things. There's another way where, say you've got a 2x6 and you want to turn it into a 2x4, the other way is to pocket it, like say you were to cut it off with a saw, um, which is you draw a feature on that one side of that object and you cut out whatever you need to cut out of it. That's the other way. Uh, that's that's very really useful. Hmm? But yeah, that's, pros and cons. Sorry, say it again. Pros and cons? Pros and cons of the two methods. The pros and cons are I don't know about pros and cons as much as they're d completely different methods. The pros of existing sketches is that it's very easy to do to change complex shapes that way. You can really drag it. If it's a, say it's some polygon of, sh of a shape, it's very easy to drag things around and change their dimensions. That's what I would say. But as far as if you want to pocket things to cut off a piece, like say you've got a two by eight that you need, like a pre-cut stud, but you have a full stud, which is 8 feet, you need to cut 3 eighths inches. Uh, it'll be quicker to do it within the sketch, if, if you have the sketch. Because then, to do the workflow of cutting it off, you have to first draw another sketch, and then pocket it. So, I think it's simpler to do the working at the sketch level, whenever that's available. So, you're saying if you don't have the sketch available, then you could pocket it? I guess it's the last resort. But in some places, it's yeah. it's very convenient to pocket things. Like if you want to put a hole in a side, like if you're adding additional features, then you you absolutely need the the pocket thing, like in a in a feature on feature exercise, because the sketch only allows you to extrude one dimension. So you cannot add features in the two other dimensions. That's the disadvantage of the sketch. Whereas with pocket and feature, you can add three-dimensional features in any dimension, X, Y, or Z. So I'm going to write a basic question, FreeCAD 101 question is, what are the two ways to edit a 3D object? Two different ways. So uh, yeah, can we 
continue. So yeah, uh, as in select the modules that are outstanding. And I guess the index should be what's the completion spreadsheet look like right now. Well, more like the, let's see, are we using that? Are people still using the completion spreadsheet or just going into the free cut page, the wiki page? I'm using it if I'm working on the file. Mm-hmm. And also using it to track the percentage. So yeah. I'm trying to join the, uh, the Zoom meeting. Mm-hmm. So make sure like you're not, uh, Justin's asking to delete the sketches before you upload. Well, uh, the final file, yeah, but not the former files. You, you want to keep all that information in the version of history. So one file has the sketches, the, the final one that goes into the final assembly does not. I guess we should make that clear. Do you ever, you never throw away information, you want to save all of that if you're working in a formal development process. Related to the wall panels, is there only a junction box in a given panel that has an outlet in it, or does every single wall panel have a junction box? Ah, uh, I see, yeah. Only the ones that have electrical in them. If, if it doesn't have electrical, then no junction boxes. And why are we just run through the, the channel beneath yeah. to get to what does have it. Okay, cool. Yep. Is there a general target time, uh, like uh, length of time for like these morning sessions, uh, like for well, for those who are remote? You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of as soon as we go over through the stuff, which we we're kind of done right now. We're at the phase of just working on the modules, um, but the target is ideal would be like one hour of presentation, and then we're working through things. But if we get get into these longer exercises kind of going at it just we got to get the basics down right, right. okay just yeah just yeah i'm gonna have to jump off but just want to know for a few minutes. yeah so right now we want to be dividing the tasks and just doing them
Yeah. Hi everyone. I guess my mic should work. Hi. Hi Martin. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's a good time to interrupt. It looks like it's almost end of meeting or low busy time. I don't know. Um, yeah, we're working on this, but uh, yeah, tell me, tell me what's on your mind. Uh, so yeah, just context quickly. Uh, so I'm uh, from the you know me from the VeloCar project. Yeah, yeah. So what's <laughs> what's going on lately? Uh, yeah, lots. But uh, we can catch up later, I guess, yeah. because I'm just yeah out of the blue. I just know you started two hours ago. Uh, yeah, that's what I assume. So I don't want to interrupt too much. It's just uh, I will try to invest time and brain juice to help. Yeah. So it's just about uh, thinking because many topics, I guess I could help, but yeah, what's really useful for you now and also to think for next year where I will have uh, hopefully much more time to help. Yeah, wh what are you up to these days? Are you you're still working on that car stuff or? Uh, next year, R this year is uh, very likely software 95% of the time. Mm. And uh, mechanics, electronics next year. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess you, I see you very busy and doing a lot of uh, CAD. And so it's just uh, a reinstall free CAD. And I saw your argument about going for, I mean, your argument, let's say uh, a few portion of it, of uh, just going for wiki to do version management and free CAD without the assembly uh, workbench. And mm -hmm. yeah, this, I guess I, I should give you my feedback. And um, if it's useful, if you think it's useful, then I will invest a bit more time on FreeCAD. Uh, so I never used 19 version 0.19 before, but finally they have a, an assembly workbench that could somehow do some stuff. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I will invest yeah. time. The question is, is it useful for you? Because you said that no, you want simple, inclusive, and it's both. Um, it's both. Which one? <laughs> For me, I'm simple engineer. I need a version. <laughs> so is it 0.19 or 0.16? Because 0.16, honestly, for me, it's a dead end. Without assembly, I wouldn't do CAD. And also without versioning system. That's why I, I just need to know how useful it is for you right now. At some point, I know it will be useful, but maybe it's not the time. How do you collaborate in that in that kind of framework? If there's so there's FreeCAD 16 stuff and uploads on the wiki, are you, what are you suggesting? So for me, I use uh, I, I used and I will keep using uh, Git for versioning as a versioning server. Uh, the Git uh, service could be GitHub, GitLab, that the two main, uh, or even Big Bucket for that matter, because what you need out of Git is not that advanced, mm -hmm. and you need uh, a maintainer, a lead that is responsible for the master, a protected branch, and you everybody is working on on other branch. And the, the lead, so you uh, do the integration, and it's already what's happening right now. Uh, from what I understand, you do the integration, or somebody else does it. Or who is responsible for the file called House Assembly Master? It's actually it's somewhat shared. Somewhat shared. I mean, we're learning. You need how a lead now. <laughs> you need a lead. You need a, consider even if it's not a lead in the sense of director. You, you need a maintainer, somebody responsible for for. The main committer, if you want, or how to phrase it. Yeah, uh, the, the ultimate is decided by what's built, so it's kind of an iterative process in that still pretty much doing lead, like quality control and lead stuff. Um, yeah, but people are working on modules. They yeah. deliver uh, FreeCAD uh, files that are modules from what I saw. Well, they're also and putting then them you do a what so they also put it into the the master, the assembly master? Yeah, look at the version history of that one. Look at the master. There's Everyone's doing it. And then there's quality control that's performed on top of that. But the thing is that merges can happen 
uh, if there's mistakes, which it's not mistakes, it's, a, it's that iterative versions are put up with more detail. So we're constantly upgrading that and it's uh, because it's modular it's, it's, and it's defined. The interface is defined so anyone can actually participate so as long, so basically, the idea, the contract first design, is when you define the interfaces and modularize, then you don't need to reconcile until very late, just like with the second Toyota paradox thing. Have you heard about that one? It's uh, so it's uh, successive prototyping according to the to the second Toyota paradox. That's that's the pattern we're following here. So, second Toyota Paradox, I will look later. I'll just yeah, look it. check it out on the wiki. So, second Toyota Paradox on the wiki, okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay, you could have multiple. I would recommend to have a protected master and only people. Uh, yeah, okay, th that's everything is possible in the end. Uh, just to give a feedback, it's not to say how to do it. It's just. Um, so if you have somebody responsible for the assembly, yeah, I mean, then it's, it's already a long discussion. Well, um, I think the ultimate question is, is the product, does the product result? I mean, that's the, that's the bottom line, is the product being produced? Yeah, but right now what you do, so you are just placing manually, or even if you use a property value, like to give millimeter position, it's not based on constraint. Uh, so it's not an assembly that you are doing. You are placing parts next to each other. Yeah. That's wrong. <laughs> and I can see that you will make it work for this project, <laughs> but that's not mechanical engineering. And my, okay, I, I should give you also my uh, bias. My analysis is, there is uh, like order of magnitude better house to design to be done by doing it the mechanical engineer way, not the current, which is architect don't have a clue about manufacturing and like war end workers and worker being given very poor instructions. So it's the difference between building a car and building a house. The way you design car today is uh, if I mean. So modules, they, yeah, they fit on an interface and you have an higher assembly uh, or higher structure, if you want, that guarantee that the plates are following the constraint of assembly. That's why you need the assembly. And you cannot substitute the assembly by placing manually parts. Because when you do a mistake, if you want, there is no way to check for the mistake. You can manually go over it, but you are not designing... How do you check for, uh, mistakes? How do you check for mistakes in assembly workflow? That's why I recommend a maintainer, protected master branch, and somebody responsible for the, the assembly. You need somebody guaranteeing that the integration is correct. It's not scalable. I know you. How is that say, scalable? Yeah, I, I know you might say this, but it is. Because that's the only way it's been done right now, and it scales already. I mean, we are building rockets, and we are building cars. It and scales and for stuff. centralized organizations. We're trying to do it in a, in a non-centralized yep. way. No, no, the control, you, you mean the fact that everybody can commit and everybody can do a copy, have their fork, propose a modification. The Git workflow is decentralized. Everybody has the working copy. I'm not saying lock files and stuff. I, I disagree with this completely. I, I told you, Git. And also, next point is Git. Why Git and not uh, Wiki for version control? Because Git is guaranteeing the integrity. So it's, co it's versioning the complete folder and subfolder structure and every file and every relation between each file. The fact that you have files splitted over a Wiki page, for instance, in, you have to, I mean, you don't feel it because you are already deeply embedded into this project, but for me, to have access to a working copy of your design, I need to go through every page, download every file, and I will have to manually maintain the version of the file. No, you just this need to. This is a nightmare. You just need to download the master. That's all you need to do. Yes, but the master is only the composite. So, what you did in the master, you did composite. Uh, so it's not the original uh, source file, if you want. It's a copy uh, that is dead. What you want is a repository that keeps all the code together as a working repository. 
you don't want individual files. It's not scalable. And How is that scalable? It can How be. How does that scale so for larger things? Would, you you'd need pretty large computer resources. The same resources way you're trying to, to scale right now. The same way you are trying to, to scale right now by saying that your interface, that your contract for interface respect this. And if people don't respect this, they will not be integrated. You can go further by trying to automate the verification of the interface. Uh, honestly, that's overkill. You are not there. Yeah. <laughs> you are really not. Take a look at the second but Toyota Paradox and if you can provide feedback with, with that in mind. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. So why would that be a problem? So you think that this approach could not fit with this uh, set, second to the paradox, the set-based concurrent engineering? That's the goal? Yeah. What you're describing is the standard process, but we're, I mean, we're not seeing limits to it. But in the end, so what you care is about horizontal coordination across functions. So individual teams doing uh, indivi separate function, and then you reconcile these modules. Th that's still the same thing, not the second Toyota paradox, or is saying other thing than just this. The horizontal coordination across function. Late integration. very far down the stream. Okay. It doesn't preclude maintainers. I think that's that naturally happens. And so, what do you qualify as late integration? Yeah. What for you is late? That whoever no, builds, the ultimate, yeah, the ultimate integrator is the builder, because it will always change. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you freeze it at any time or have a master of any type, you always be locked at that um, Ultimate arbiter for a version that works is the person that builds it, because every hardware build is a fork. That's the kind of logic there. Ah, uh, okay, okay, but I think then uh, here we disagree. But first is uh, so the Git workflow is not locking the every bro so it's not locking everything. It's only locking the master. And where I think we disagree is for me, you need a reference, you need version that you put into production. You can have as much version of you want as prototype, ideation, whatever, this doesn't matter. But in the end, you will be responsible for a product. Yeah, this after product, we, yeah right, after we build it, we, we So when I talk about the master, I talk about the product. Any branch, so every developer can have a branch first, or you do feature branch or developer branch. It, you can do both. It doesn't limit anything. You can do exactly what you are doing right now. But having so two advantage, first is for each developer, they can uh, pull from other branch. They can version the whole uh, repository, so folder, subfolder, and files together. And progressively, you will have pull requests of people saying, OK, I commit this file to the master. Somebody qualified, don't view it as the one controlling, but you will have people qualified to judge the quality of uh, the module and say, OK, that's good, we can integrate. Because in the end, you will be re responsible for the master. And at the point of maturity, the master will go to uh, 
prototype build, then a refinement build, I don't know, until you have uh, a release. That's the main advantage of Git. So Git is very different from what people do in the industry. In the industry, they have, if you want, one branch. And everybody pick and develop on the same branch. Everything is blocked if anybody is changing something. Or at least on the file, they are locked. They are locking. So you could have the same freedom. It's not forcing you into uh, locking anything. But in the end, I recommend locking the master because of the qualification and because of responsibility. You need to make sure that, and especially when the product will exist, um, the, the refinement of uh, the product, when it exists, you have to understand that each time you release a product, you have to be responsible for maintaining it, maintaining, maintaining it, selling spare parts if things break. So you, that's why it's, uh, for me, it's not incompatible. I don't see the, the problem. It's one way to go. I mean, there's different ways to go. I don't see what, there's anything, what you're describing precludes, is precluded from what we're doing there. Um, I, sorry guys, I, I think the, the, the approaches are complementary. Like, w you can do both and they can be integrated. There's, there's no reason why we need to have this conversation in a sense, because both approaches result in the same artifacts that can be compared. We can think of Wikipedia, uh, the wiki versions, as one of the branches and integrate whatever happens in the Git universe back into Wikipedia on an automatic basis. Who's speaking? Sure. Hey, this is Paul. Paul, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. Mm. Uh, so was that was that Jan or uh, uh, sorry I couldn't catch who's yeah who's that was the, Jan speaking okay. there, there was Jan so Jan um, there were some other conversations in Discord I don't know if you're following that uh, those threads the idea is for us the people who believe in Git and the merge branch workflow to generate to demonstrate a workflow so if you're interested in in uh, highlighting how it could work. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm interested in uh, in trying to demonstrate this. I don't know enough about FreeCAD because my background is not hardware, but but I need to work with somebody who understands the the, the hardware design part, and I can contribute the software engineering part if you're interested. Yeah, so, sounds good. So just uh, I need to catch up on FreeCAD. That's clearly not my environment, but uh, it's just, so. It shouldn't be too long. Um, and then, but I saw you on the uh, Discord, Paul. So I guess that can be done uh, later. Yeah, perfect. And the problem is when I get to the Trying to cut out the piece? Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, Do you still have the sketch yeah. underneath it? No, it doesn't have the sketch. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's uh. Okay, I'll revert back to the video work with the sketch. Uh, I can't explain it. That's that's an artifact of. Uh, yeah. Oh, I think I know. Yeah. Send 
what's up here? Is this this is another duck? Uh, right. Okay. 